Um, I'll start. I mean, I got the impression from this film that you guys had such a great time shooting it. There was such a nice atmosphere so emanating from it. Uh, was that the case? Was this a really kind of enjoyable shoot? Yeah, it's pretty one of the most enjoyable of my life, I must say. I mean, it, there, there's the, the, when we worked together first time on Nanny McPhee, that's that's a different kind of enjoyable mm. because there's an awful lot resting on it. You know, you worked on it for a long, long time. This was one of those blissful and rare things where four people, because it's an ensemble comedy, four people come together and really it's it was just ideal, the chemistry somehow. I mean, that's casting. I was, my dad was the direct director and he always said 90% of the work was casting. Mm. And so Joel just did such a great job. I mean, he, he, he and I had worked together before. I said, do, get, offer this to Pierce because he's just perfect for it. And then he said, this is who I want. And we all just went, oh, please. And Pierce said, I only ever want to work with Celia and Tim for the rest <laughs> of my life. And it, it was such a glorious combination. And our favourite days on the shoot were when we were all four of us together. And I love that it was obviously infectious too. Mm. Our, our fun and our joy. Mm. And because, I mean, I mean, you've both done, you know, profound, poignant productions in the past. But is it just fun sometimes to, to get involved in heists and jump into the sea and, and stuff like that? Is, is that quite a nice departure for you both? Well, I think it's a, de a great departure for the audience, too. What a relief, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I love doing serious stuff. We both do. Um, and, but we love making people laugh. But it's just the relief of this is just a bit of fun with an underlying uh, other bits in it. But, you know, as films used to be in the 50s and 60s, because well, yeah, we're, not, we we're not trying to pretend to be, you know... Uh, um, with some great political angst or something, although there's there's a serious underlying subject of it, but it is very refreshing, I think, don't you? Mm. It's it's a friend of mine who's a great producer is doing some work like with a psychologist at the moment about why we don't make movies that are designed to make us happy from the yes. moment you start watching them until the end. We used to make we used to make movies like that um, a lot, and. I mean, I suppose there is the political argument. You could say that somehow in the 1950s, certainly in America, everybody was just waving their hands about trying to ignore what was really going on. Um, and there, there's, you know, that's arguable. But um, there's a great tradition in um, our cultures of writing things that are designed to be uplifting from the moment. You don't have to go on some journey and you don't have to be taught anything. I get the feeling a lot of the time that I'm being taught something. Mm. And, and after a while I go, yes, but I knew that. Mm. I knew that. I would like you to entertain me. That is what I'm paying my money for. Mm. And that's what I feel. I, I, I'm going to go and see this and go, oh, great. I'm going to see four people at the top of their game entertaining me. I'd like to pay money to see that. And you do go on a journey as well, actually, with yeah. us. With yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. take you along. Absolutely. And although, I mean, I'm, obviously it would have been terribly hard work, of course, but it must have been really, really fun being on the Mediterranean as well. Yes. <laughs> it was so lovely. And it was, what was very funny was we had a French crew who were all very mumpish about the fact that we had to go back and shoot the rest of it in Paris. Whereas we, we, we the we four of us it. were going, you mean we get to go and shoot the rest of this in Paris? We were thrilled. Mm. We were thrilled. But Although that was quite a long journey to the su suburban outskirts, wasn't it? Oh, yes. There's, was... there's a bit in the film, actually, and I defy anybody to know necessarily which bit it is, which is pretending to be Surrey. And that was quite hard to yeah. find somewhere in Paris that was yeah. pretending to be Surrey. They yeah. did it. I know, they did it. Um, but no, it was completely continentally gorgeous. It was hilarious. But in spite of that, what's, what's the worst holiday you've both been on? Is there any that spring to mind? Oh, yes, yes, I've got one. Go on. Greg and I once went on. Um, oh God, I can't think I could say no because it'll. No, 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 I can't say. Can't no, I can't. I can't. I've suddenly realised I can't say. You go and you go. I'm just trying to think, actually, too. You see, we get into terrible trouble if we say anything, really, don't we? Yeah, because this is all. It's mm. like it's all very well in one interview, but whatever you say yes, these days, it will come back and bite you. It, yeah, because it everywhere mm. it will get picked up you go on youtube you said this you said that i mean everything's mm. changed now so you so can ask all sorts of questions we've and all I'm, had marvelous holidays yes always. i've never had a bad holiday ever <laughs> everywhere i've ever been everybody's we been marvelous <laughs> 
And I'm sorry, that's the world we live in. Yeah. I got stuck in the Euro tunnel yesterday. Actually, n- not in the tunnel, but I have to say, in life, the Euro star staff were absolutely marvellous. Oh, really great. Because mm. they had that moment, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, somebody got a was lot struck of... by lightning. You know, not their fault, but they were just wonderful. Mm. Particularly Justine, if she's listening. Justine. Très bien fait. And uh, my final question is, um, of course, Celia, you're in the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, which was a, a huge success, and it's got a sequel on the way. Um, and that's, that's another film that is, it just purely wants to entertain, in a similar vein to The Love Punch. And I was wondering if there was a potential sequel for The Love Punch. Is that something that you, oh, you would be so. interested in? I think so. I think that you two get kidnapped. <laughs> I think you'd go on, go on a yacht, get kidnapped by some Harley pirates. You come we'll get Barkad Abdi to come in and play it, we'll, and he can do a comic version. And then we come out and... Uh, me- meanwhile, I've been training, you know. Okay. I, get, I go into training, us. but I obviously break my ankle training because that's what would be funny is I get very, very fit and then break my ankle and okay. have to be looked and after. And you come and rescue us. Yeah. And then the theme tune is sung by Billy, G- Billy Joel, Ocean. Billy Ocean, Ocean. Billy yes. Ocean. It sounds like a film that needs a role for Liam Neeson as well, but isn't it? Yes, Why that's not? true. No, yeah. absolutely. Liam could be in it. He should run a bar. But you Let's never... say he could run a bar on a beach. Yes, but you never Do know. It. You never know. <laughs> of course he would. Well, thank you so much for your time today.